I want to kick off on the topic of creatine, to which yeah. you have, you know, more recent, you know, d dirt under your fingernails, um, and digging around in a creatine tub, maybe. So kind of, you know, let, let's, let's kick off there. It's almost at a point, and, and I don't, you, you know, there's no reason for me to say this other than what the research says that almost everyone should be taking this molecule. I mean, it's wonderful. The benefits, of, we don't even, I don't even think that we'd look at the benefits that much anymore as just the periphery, right? You and I know conclusively this works at the level of the skeletal muscle. It, it can improve power. It can improve strength. It can improve intramuscular hydration. It may have a role when post-training when ingested with carbohydrates, it's facilitating glycogen synthesis faster. But the amazing thing, Mike, is, is it continues to gain press and research in, in a host of therapeutic categories. The, the uh, neuroprotective effects, right? Um, more and more data shows it may have benefits on, on the brain. And so really we're dealing with a substance, particularly creatine monohydrate, that is not, it's very cost effective, it's easily accessible. It has 30 years of research. And in, in those 30 years, there have been people trying to prove it to be harmful and not effective. No one has succeeded. And now, as, as we continue to look at it, it's going into, again, potential therapeutics and neuromuscular disorders. Um, you know, the pro, used prophylactically to mitigate the, the trauma that occurs and once we get hit in brain injury, so in fighting in particular, so potentially TBI could be mitigated by the, by the advanced administration and post administration of this. So we're in a position, Mike, where I, I really, there, I've gone to presentations and um, wonderful scientists will just say, you know what, take creatine. <laughs> we're at that point where, where there, there are no negative effects. I, I, I haven't seen them. And there are, that's actually a great point. As of the year 2020, I remember back in the early 90s, I was working for and then managing a general nutrition center when okay. Bill Phillips and EA Sports or is it EAS popularized creatine monohydrate usage. I mean, Bill Phillips is the guy, didn't invent it, right? Didn't find it, didn't isolate it. But he fucking marketed it, which is why we're probably maybe talking about it now. You and I both guys from that 80s, 90s era slanging weights. We were all on creatine. All our buddies were on creatine. The little white bottles with the purple EAS logo, right? That, that was the only game in town. And Bill came out with the loading phase, the, the five by five, five grams, five times a day for five days. Bang, you go through bottle number 20, you transition based upon body weight, five or 10, you know, grams a day, you know, moving forward. Yep, so yep. with, I just want to touch briefly on number one, is creatine monohydrate. There's been multiple versions since then, better digestion, absorption, all this stuff. Seems to keep going back to creatine monohydrate is still the, the industry standard, if you. I want to get your thoughts on that. And also the loading phase to what Phillips has said, is that necessary or just an accumulation of five grams per day, let's say, for 30, 60 days? Um, yep. Great question. So I think if you look at some of the top researchers and uh, Dr. Sean Arendt, uh, Dr. Andy Galpin, of course, okay. and Dr. Forbes, Dr. Kendo, and you look at the ISSN, International Society of Sports Nutrition, position on that. Right? What we know is monohydrate today, nothing tops it, right? Uh, a lot of times you'll say faster absorption. Well, you know, again, it, how quick an absorption do you need when the effects are aggregate? So it's not like caffeine where you and I are taking it 45 minutes before a workout to get the immediate effect, right? Now, complete bioavailability, yes. I mean, we want to absorb all that we can. However, to date, we just don't find anything that seems to be any more effective. You will hear things such as, oh, uh, creatine or, you know, crealkaline or different forms. And, and they'll tell you things like, uh, well, you know, it's creatine without the side effects of water retention. Well, then that's like me buying whey protein without the protein. You know, yeah. <laughs> the water retention is, is the positive. It's not a negative. It's, it's intramuscular water retention. So, so right at this time, I can't offer, and there are people who are far more versed because they dedicate their life to this research, far more versed than I say so, but we don't have to go any other route. It's monohydrate, man. Yep. 
And yep. with that, what about the, the loading phase? Is there, <laughs> what would you say that, that like the five by five, let's say, do you have any thoughts, best practices um, yeah. for the, the healthy average adult, um, you know, athlete to, to start, you know, considering what might work well for them? I, that's a great question. And I think to your point, if you're looking to administer it or an adult is interested in the best benefits, like we said, the, the neuroprotective, um, the potential strength increases, I don't think we would have to load under those circumstances because the loading was far more valuable when we felt, when, when we were younger, Mike, and guys felt, hey, you know what? Uh, we can only take it for eight weeks. Yeah. Well, or, or six weeks, then that loading phase would make more sense, right? Okay, interesting. Because we, yeah. want to, we want to accumulate, we want to build it up, and we have a shorter duration in which we want to reach yeah. enough level of, you know, to get it into the muscle. I think as we learn when you can administer, administer it prophylactically and take it long term, that, that chronic dosing would be fine for five grams as an example. Yeah. And that seems to be a nice amount for health and strength benefit. I think one exception would be, you know, someone like yourself, people come to you and did for many years, sometimes last minute, eight weeks out, right? And they would say, Mike, I need some help. I got to get stronger. I got to get leaner. I got to cut weight. Well, under those circumstances, if you wanted the benefits of creatine and you only had eight weeks to a fight, well, then you might do a loading phase because you don't have the longer term chronic application or, you know, ingestion. Yeah. So yeah, there's, it's not to condemn the loading phase. I think it's highly valuable. I, I just saying for the most people, unless they're an athlete, if, if that's a deadline that they have to excel in six weeks, it may not be necessary. You know, great points. And then to bring, bring some real world application, we work with one of the high level CrossFit ladies who's twice been on the podium. When we started working with her, she had previously been using the, the heavy loading phase and then kind of a almost a taper into the end, kind of a reduction to a maintenance, severe digestive issues, um, just lots of discomfort, loss of appetite, some, you know, non-weight associated metric points, really more lifestyle-based points that she was suffering with. Now, when we kind of jumped in, we said, hey, well, let's, let's take like, you enjoy it, it works well, you respond well, right? Numbers go up on the barbell and all, you know, other stuff works well. Let's go low. Let, let, let's take 12 weeks. And we just simply started with, with five grams a day, one scoop a day for 12 weeks. And like you said, it just slowly accumulated in time. That's she right, felt right. great. I, I mean, you know, kind of mixing in, in the warm water early, you know, you know, post work after the first workout of the day was kind of like what, what we fit into with that little post workout and whatnot. Um, the next thing is working with someone who might have a short term, three weeks to look a certain way, physique athlete, actor, you got your wedding's coming up and you, you kind of, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, went a little crazy, maybe at the bachelor party, you want to, you know, kind of, you know, fix things up. Um, <laughs> faster loading phase, right? That, that, that's kind of simple. Exactly. Exactly. And actor's a great example. Yeah. Great point. And I didn't even think of that. You're the diversity of population you work with, you know, would gives that gives me that example that, and, and look, so yeah, that three, four week duration, then we could load, but to your point too, that's, that's where people come in with the side effects. Oh my, you know, somebody loads and loads heavy. Look, if I go eat, you know, tub of ice cream right now, there's going to be a side effect. So overdoing the dosing at any given point, I'm probably not going to feel optimal. Yeah. So administering it like you did with your champion athlete sounds wonderful, particularly because they're going to be consistent over time with it. And, 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 you know, if we know we could get adherence, then I don't think we have to load. It's, that's what's wonderful. Yeah, no, that makes great sense. And, you know, because, God damn, you and I, how many scoops have you taken over the last 30 some odd years, right? The loading phase was the worst phase. I'm like, Son of a- it was, right? Totally. I take this thing again.